a perfect pair. What, these two? No, this lot. It's late January and because he's had a herd of up to 80 fallow deer chewing on his young rape, he's had to employ some new tactics. Diversionary feeding. Cousin Gary will take one high seat and is hoping to keep his extremities warm with Andy's cushion. Yes, that cushion I knew he was going to take that cushion. I know you need this cushion, Dave, because you've got piles real bad and you're always complaining about them. Right. Now, as you see, as, as we come up, there's two over there. Um, so Gary's going to go in the hot seat because he's, he's my guest. And, uh, so he's going, he's, yeah, again. So he's going back over there. We're going to go on another high seat out the top. And uh, hopefully we, we bump into a couple. We're further up the hill and we'll unload these pairs once it gets dark. Sadly, they were destined for the bin. Well, there's nothing wrong with these, is They're lovely pairs. There's nothing wrong with them at all. These, the only thing is a bit small. Instead of eating one, you eat two. Um, why they can't use them for canning and that, I don't know. This, we got the bulk bins down the yard. Oh, they're massive, some of those. They're lovely pairs. I've, I've been eating them and they're gorgeous. People might watch this and say, oh, he's feeding them. He's encouraging them to come to his land. No, I'm not. I'm encouraging them to come to where I can shoot them. They're already here. They're here all the time. So you, you go and talk to next door. They've fed their pheasants this year. Um, they've fed nearly 30 tonne of corn. And I bet at least they usually do between 15, 15 and 18 tonne a year. And this year the, the deer are just absolutely hammering them next door. They've got maize, maize cover crops. They smashed the hell out of that right away early on. But they just, all the time, he's just going around filling his feeders. I've got to say, no, I've got to deliver some more corn to him tomorrow because he's out again. So whether they come daylight, like where Gary is, there was two there. Um, if we hadn't been waiting for you, David, um, we probably would have oh, a... probably been there and Gary would have had those two. But um, <laughs> still late. Late is better than not at all. Um, yeah, our money. Come on, let's get nice. Okay. We hear a shot from Gary. Maybe it was one of the deer we'd seen earlier. Yes, that means I've got, got some guala in to do in a minute. Just hope something comes out here in a minute. We have to wait until it's almost dark before two bucks appear. They need to get a move on. before it's too dark and they get a bit of a trot on well not trot on they're, they're making their way here steadily uh, they're eating eating the rope on their way here so um yeah hopefully they get here that's the, that's one of the reasons for for putting the pairs there it, it, i know they're going to come to here it's just when they get here in time so but if, if those pairs weren't here they they'd hit up over the fence down there go out in the field he wasn't going to shot them but at least I know there is deer coming here, and it's just whether it's, it's potluck whether they come here before it gets dark. Um, but yeah, these two are—they're coming. They, they've moved probably uh, 50 yards. No, probably more. Than that. They've moved up here about 80 yards in about the last five minutes. Um, so hopefully they, hopefully they get here. Are you on the right hand one? I'll stop him in a minute. You want it? He takes the bigger buck, but leaves the second. It was nice. If Gary has one, then a third or potentially fourth would mean a late start on the rabbits. Shall we wait and then they come? Back at the yard, the deer are processed and we changed the Blaser R8 for the 178MR. 
Although many places don't have rabbits at the moment, the milder weather means his have been busy. It's the same old story as last year, but there's just little, just little pockets of them, little pockets about, and just want to get a few before they start breeding, really, because they've, they've been mating like crazy because it's been so mild. But yeah, so I just thought you were up here, we'd just pop out for now and see if we can pick a few up. On the grass here, they're not sitting very well. They, they're, they're away straight away. Um, there's not a lot to hold them. They're a bit jumpy. I know there's some other people shooting here, but um, but on the wheat, they're tending to hold a bit longer because uh, it's a lot longer. They're, they're sitting tight, which is quite nice. Gives me a bit of chance. It gives me a bit of time. But over on this grass, I'm having to rush them a little bit. We're going to go and do one more grass field up, up, up along the track. There's usually a few rabbits out there. Uh, see what there is out there, and then go back on the wheat for half an hour or so until we pick up another half a dozen. Keep it on him, I'll have him running. At the top of one of the grazing fields of Woodcock, it shows you always need to be 100% sure you know what you're shooting at. This field here in particular, you can see there's a lot of mole wheels here, so it must be a lot of worms. The amount of times, it's a bit dry at the minute, um, but the amount of times you come up here and, like Gary said, I was usually Woodcock here, um, and I've seen dozen of 15 here. Back at the yard, Andy uses the incinerator to dispose of the grub. Straight in the furnace, that's useful. Yeah, it is. It is handy. All the foxes we shoot, all the deer guts, it, all the waste all goes in here. It all gets burnt, so just saves having it about, laying about. So. Some of these rabbits are very covered and will be heading to his kitchen and not the game dealer. All the fat around the kidneys. Yeah, they've had it so easy. I don't even know where that one ended up. It's been a productive evening's best control job that's also delivered some wonderful wild meat for the table with a side order of pear.